But away from the glamour of the main lines, there had been a need for smaller, less spectacular workaday engines for suburban services and branches. These were the tank engines, which carry their water in tanks instead of a separate tender. The Great Western Railway, under its chief mechanical engineer Churchwood, built 5541 at Swindon in 1928. One of hundreds of similar engines with a 262 or prairie wheel arrangement, which allowed the engines to run equally steadily forward and backward. With the comparative luxury of an all-over cab to protect the crew, these tank engines were ideal for short journeys and there was no need to turn the engine between trips. Private railways are essentially old branch lines, which tended not to have large turntables, so tank engines tend to be the first choice, and most private lines have at least one. Their inherent qualities commended them for the new role, and dozens remain active today all round the country. The Great Western also operated a large fleet of pannier tanks, which continued to be built well after the Second World War, even into British Railways days. Panniers have the great advantage of plenty of clear space beneath the tanks, allowing easier access to the frames and motion for day-to-day -day maintenance. They worked on every kind of duty, from local passenger to pick up freights and shunting, all over the Great Western system. But this is how panniers are best remembered, chuffing quietly along a country line where speed is not of the essence and business not too demanding. What a glorious day for the driver. Sadly, this was just the sort of picturesque line, however, whose traffic leached away with the coming of the bus, the lorry and the car. Things had been going downhill from the First World War and especially in the 1940s, although during the war many branches were heavily used. By the 1950s, closures were coming thick and fast, so the famous beaching report of 1963 merely hastened a process that was already well underway. The Gresley Class N2062 was built in 1921 for the Great Northern Railway. It was designed for a specific job, hauling heavy commuter traffic between London's northern suburbs and the city itself. The N2 class was distinctive in that it was fitted with condensing gear. This enabled the exhausted steam from the cylinders to be condensed and returned to the water tanks instead of being sent into the atmosphere. This helped make the engines more economical and made conditions on the footplate much more bearable in the two mile tunnel on the Great Northern Line into the city from King's Cross to Moorgate. Many of Britain's railways also needed a selection of mixed traffic locomotives, which were designed with something of a compromise between speed and power. This produced an engine of intermediate size, like the S15 Class 460, built for the London and South Western Railway in 1920. These locomotives would be equally at home on passenger or freight trains. Medstead and Foremark station is on the Mid Hants Railway, which is marketed today as the Watercress Line. Situated west of Alton in Hampshire, the station lies on a hilly section of line known as the Alps. This railway was once a through route from Alton to Winchester, 
and double heading of all but the lightest trains was common. It was closed by British Rail in 1973 and the section now in use from Alton to Alsford was back in use by 1985. The code 6F, painted above the locomotive number, indicates the engine's power rating on a scale rising from 0 to 9, while the F indicates that it's primarily designed for freight working. This particular locomotive spent its life working from the Southern Railway's vast Feltham Freight Complex in West London. Note once again the watercart bogey tender. The Southern have no water troughs, remember. 